Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another Unihertz phone to check out today. This is their Atom XL. And we've looked at a bunch of phones from this company over the last couple of years, and they're always very different and unique. This one is a ruggedized four inch device. It feels very solid in the hand here. And in addition to acting as a smartphone, you can also attach an antenna here at the top and turn it into a walkie talkie. And if you are an amateur radio operator like me, you can actually use this with both analog and digital repeaters. So there's a lot you can do with this phone. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Unihertz sent the phone to us free of charge for this review. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and they are not paying for this review. So all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this phone is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $340. In the United States, it will work on T-Mobile and Verizon, but it's limited to 4G only. It is not a 5G phone. On Verizon, they do suggest that you activate your SIM card on another phone first and then move it over to this one to get everything working. As I mentioned at the outset, it is very rugged here. It's also IP68 rated for water and dust protection. It feels super solid. Like all Unihertz phones, it is very well built. It has a screen protector already uh, installed on it. It looks pretty nice, and there's another one in the box as well. As you saw at the beginning, we attached the walkie-talkie antenna here, but if you're not using that feature, you don't need to have that attached. It does have a fingerprint sensor here on the front, as you can see, and we'll go over some of the other buttons in a minute. Now, the display on this is, again, 4 inches, 1136 by 640, and when you've got pretty decent resolution and a small screen size like this, it looks very nice, but it won't, of course, rival some of the more expensive flagship phones out there. Inside it has 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now you can put two SIM cards in here to run it on two different cellular networks or you can put a single SIM card in and then also install an SD card to get some supplementary storage on board. Now it has a pretty low-end processor on board, a MediaTek Helio P60. It's adequate for doing the things that this phone does, but of course there are much more powerful phones on the market these days. Now this has two cameras. You've got one on the back here, which comes in at 48 megapixels. I found the pictures to be nice and sharp with a good amount of resolution, but because this doesn't have a lot of the advanced software features that we see on many flagship phones, it won't rival what you'll see out of a Google Pixel 6a, for example, but it's good enough for taking a picture every once in a while. I was, though, disappointed with the video quality because despite the fact that it has a very high-resolution sensor, the best it will do for video out of the rear is 1080p at 30 frames per second, and the stabilizer isn't so great on it. You do have a front-facing selfie camera here. This one is 8 megapixels, but will only do 720p video, and again, kind of a lackluster uh, image coming out of that camera, but good enough, I think, for having this as your supplementary phone. Now, like most Unihertz phones, you get a button here on the side that you can program to do different tasks. And on this phone, it certainly makes sense to have that button work as a push-to-talk button when you're in the walkie-talkie mode. And again, we're going to check out that mode in a little bit. But you can program it to do other things. So what I've done with mine here is that when I push it once, I get the calculator. When I push it twice, I get the walkie-talkie radio. And if I hold it down, I get the flashlight to turn on. And of course, you can customize this to launch any app that you want. So you do have some flexibility as to what that button does. On the other side, you've got a power button here along with a volume rocker, kind of standard fare there. On the top, they have an infrared blaster because you can actually use this as a universal remote control. And there's an app that comes built in to let you manage that if you want. So you can turn your TV on with this. On the bottom, you've got your USB Type-C port for charging. This will also do OTG devices like memory sticks and that sort of thing, but it does not do video output. And you get a headphone jack right next to that, so a good selection of ports and buttons on this device. Now, as I mentioned, this does not have a very high-end processor on board, but it's certainly more than adequate for the things that I think most people would use a phone like this for. So, for example, if we jump into the web browser here, the Chrome browser, 
and just poke around the internet here, you can see that things render up pretty quickly here. You don't have a lot of screen real estate to play with, so I think this is going to be a bit limited for web browsing, but certainly email and texting and other things will work just fine on here. And this is running Android, Android 11 in this instance, so you shouldn't have any trouble getting uh, most of the chat apps and other types of apps to run on it. It's also pretty good at playing back video. I've got my YouTube channel up here, and as you can see, everything spins up pretty quickly here. We can jump through my video and get a feel for that. So from the uh, Android browsing experience, both for basic apps and video, it seems to do just fine. It's also got a pretty big battery on board as well. So if you are out in the field, uh, I would expect to get easily a day's worth of usage out of this, especially if you're not taxing the hardware all that much. If you're playing games or something, that's going to eat into the battery a bit more. But by and large, I found the battery life on this to be very good. The one exception, though, is that if you have the uh, walkie-talkie feature running in the background, that does seem to drain the battery pretty significantly. So you're going to want to make sure that app is not running if you want to preserve battery life. Now, as far as gaming goes, I don't think you'll have any issues running some of the casual Android games. I've got the Mario Kart game running here from the Play Store. And one thing that I noticed as I was playing with these games is how loud the speaker is. This is probably one of the loudest speakers I have ever seen on any phone, let alone a small one. So if you're out in the field and I uh, want to make sure you can hear your phone ringing, I don't think there's any question that you'll hear this thing ring. It is super loud. You don't get stereo sound or anything like that, but the speaker is quite powerful on this, more so than I expected. Now we did run the 3 d Mark Wildlife benchmark test on the phone, and as you can see, we got a score of 651. This is no match for the iPhone SE 2020 or the Google Pixel 6a, but those phones are not nearly as rugged as this one. And I think if you're looking for a supplementary phone, there's enough horsepower here, I think, to get most of what you need done on it. And of course, you can drop this in a stream and keep on going. Now, I wanted to spend the rest of the video talking about the walkie-talkie feature, which is a major selling point of this phone. So you saw at the beginning how we were able to screw on the antenna. The antenna here is used specifically for the walkie-talkie feature. And on the top of the phone here, you've got a standard SMA connector. So if you wanted to attach a longer antenna, like one of those survival antennas that you can use in amateur radio, uh, you can get one and screw it right in. Uh, all that said, though, you do need to be careful because the way the phone ships, it basically transmits out on frequencies that no amateur or anybody is authorized to use without a proper license. And if you want to keep yourself out of trouble, you're going to need to program the phone first before you make use of this feature because this does not work over an app or over a cellular network. It's working over standard radio frequencies. This operates in the 70 centimeter band, and the phone in particular will go from 400 megahertz to 480 megahertz. That is a large swath of the radio spectrum. And if you are an amateur radio operator, you're allowed to operate between roughly 420 and 450 megahertz. So this phone will work on frequencies, again, that you're not authorized to operate on. So if we take a look at the intercom app here, which is what controls the onboard walkie-talkie, you can see that on channel 15, it is at 415 megahertz, which again is something that we're not authorized to talk on. Now what I did earlier was program in a few channels that I am authorized to operate on so I could see how everything works. And a little bit earlier, I was able to transmit a signal to a friend of mine who lives about a mile and a half away as a bird flies. Even with terrain and trees in the way, he was able to pick me up. And if you're curious what it sounds like on the other end, have a listen. This is KC1RGS radio check. KC1RGS doing a radio check. This will transmit at two watts maximum. So it's not gonna rival some of the handheld radios out there you might buy, but it's still adequate, I think, if you're out in the woods to be able to keep in touch with people, again, provided you are authorized to use those frequencies. Now what you can do here is go into the channel list and add channels and edit them. So for example, if we go to channel one here, I can click on edit and you can type in the frequencies that you're going to be transmitting on. What's cool about this is that if you are using an amateur radio repeater, and I'll show you an example of one in a minute, 
you can have it work off of a different send and receive frequency. So many of those repeaters uh, take a signal in on a certain frequency and then retransmit the signal out on another one, and this supports that. Now, by default, this is going to work as an analog walkie-talkie, which means that any radio that can tune to the frequency that you're transmitting on should be able to pick you up and you should be able to have a conversation with somebody even if they don't have this phone. Additionally, it works as a digital radio, namely over the DMR standard, and I was able to have it connect to my local DMR repeater, which is located on the roof of a high school about a mile and a half away from me. And if I'm out on my back deck, I'm able to get my signal to reach that uh, repeater, and I was able to get uh, my signal repeated back to me. And a little earlier, I also booted up my software-defined radio to see what it sounded like, so have a look and a listen. This is KC1RGS testing my radio. KC1RGS doing a radio check. Have a good night. So in that example, I transmitted out to that repeater, it picked up my signal, and then it spit it back out digitally on another frequency. And I was able to set all of the parameters that you normally have to set when communicating with a DMR repeater. And that was kind of a nice surprise to see all of that functionality here built in. Now the DMR standard also allows for short text messages to be sent between radios. And a little bit earlier, I took out my AnyTone handheld ham radio and I was able to exchange text messages between uh, the phone here and that ham radio, as you can see here. Now, just like a regular walkie-talkie, you have to hold down a button while you talk. You can push the button here on screen or configure the red button to do the same thing. And then when you're done talking, you let it go and listen to anyone responding back to you. But again, I have to reiterate, you got to be really careful about what frequencies you have this set to transmit on because by default it's going to put you on frequencies that you are not authorized to use. My suggestion to you if you're not an amateur radio uh, licensee is to head over to radioreference.com and look up the FRS frequencies. That's the family radio service. This does not require a license so if you program your radio exactly as the frequencies here allow, you should be okay uh, from a uh, compliance standpoint. And this radio will not transmit beyond two watts, which is the maximum for the FRS radio standard. Now, I don't want to layer on too much more complexity here, but if you do intend to use the radio on channels 8 through 14 of the FRS standard, you do need to make sure the phone is set to the lower power option when you set that frequency up. That will get you at a half a watt of transmission power so that you can be in compliance here in the US. The high power mode on the phone operates at the higher two watt transmission power. And I should note that my understanding of the FRS standard is that a radio cannot be marketed as an FRS radio if it has a removable antenna. But I think if you do want to use this as a walkie-talkie and you don't have an amateur license, the FRS frequencies here are probably the safest way to operate it. But I do suggest uh, going out and getting your technician license for amateur radio. It's not all that hard to get. And if you do get one, you're allowed to operate in the portions of the 70 centimeter band uh, that this radio supports. So overall, I found this to be another solid offering from Unihertz. Their build quality is as good as any of the major manufacturers out there. This is not some generic phone. My only gripe with it though is the fact that the walkie-talkie feature does not educate the user about keeping themselves out of trouble because by default, this is transmitting on frequencies that you are not allowed to transmit on. And I think it would have been better had they programmed in the FRS frequencies versus the ones that it is shipping with. Basically, it starts at 400 megahertz and goes up from there. But as an amateur radio operator, I was impressed with the feature set, both for analog and digital transmissions. It supports everything DMR supports, so you can operate off of your local frequencies. Just know, though, that this is limited to 70 centimeter only, so you can't get into any of the lower frequencies on it. But overall, uh, for a 70 centimeter radio that has a phone built in, I think it's pretty innovative and a very nicely constructed phone on top of that. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker,
Chris Allegretta. Hot Sauce and Video Games. Logic KGR. Tom Albrecht. And I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.